expecting company tonight and a big lift planned <laughs> who said triathletes are strong pick it up pick it up pick it up pick it up Ooh. you see the drip yeah, i'm fitted yeah, up. Fit up hop in my car and the giddy up giddy secure the bag yeah i get the bus pick it up pick it up pick it up you see the drip yeah, i'm fitted up. Fit up hop in my car and the giddy up secure the bag yeah i get the bus pick it up pick it up pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. i've been on the flex since flex on neighborhood all in your eardrums i ain't never scared like bone crush TV Cribs? Wow! Very unexpected. You should really call before you come and at least set up an earlier time. But anyways, now that you're here, come on in. So I'm assuming you, I've seen MTV Cribs many times because I love that show. And uh, I'm assuming this is the part where I walk you through my beautiful training space, which I believe to be the greatest training space ever assembled in the history of planet Earth. So. Come with me and I'll take you for a little tour. So, let's just do it in the order that triathlon occurs. We have here a beautiful endless pool, which I saved up for years for. Finally, got myself a win at the Challenge World Championship in Samarin, Slovakia. And it just so happened that the prize purse was enough for one of these bad boys. So, why would someone want such a beautiful device? Well, it's mainly due to the mirrors down on the bottom, which in my swimming routine, I currently am using this three days per week. And I come into it each swim with uh, some technical elements to focus on. And so, in order, real quick, they are proper entry width, proper entry depth, proper, well actually the next one is perpendicular arm to the bottom of the pool, and the next one is proper pull path, and the next one is finish the stroke, the next one is relaxed recovery, and the final one is steady kick. And so when I come to the pool, I choose to focus on one of those, I believe, seven elements. And without a doubt, this has been helpful in making games in that regard. Additionally, you'll notice there's no turns. And so it also allows me to simulate the open water and I will do one quality session per week in this pool of which I will treat it as if it was a, uh, a race. And I'll sight, sight to the left, sight to the right, breathe bilateral, crank up speed, practice takeouts, all that kind of thing. Um, so <clears throat> this has been absolutely invaluable, worth every penny, beautiful investment. I love it dearly. So that's the pool room. Um, as you can see, it's an absolute mess, but, um, but anyways, what are you gonna do, right? It serves its purpose. So come on over here. We have, um, I spent all my money on the pool and was unable to put in a washroom. So I figured I need to at least have a urinal down here because the upstairs bathroom's a long way. So I went over to Dollarama and I got this beautiful smiley face bucket, which serves as a urinal. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a cheap way to install a bathroom. So not, not what you're used to seeing on MTV Grips, but you know, not too far off. So over here, we've got the weigh station. 2018, I lost a significant amount of weight um, from, you know, some dietary changes I made. So now I'm 
I'm very anal about making sure that I don't lose any weight. In fact, I try and even every evening weigh in as much as I possibly can on this scale. And so today I'm doing pretty good. 169.8, that's two pounds over what it actually is. It's for whatever reason, this thing's about two pounds heavy. So that's perfect. So I'll wake up tomorrow, I'll probably be 166 something after a couple peas in the evening. And, uh, and so that's, that's uh, my weigh-in station. It's a very important part of my, of my health and wellness program. Um, next, I move you over here to this beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment, the Woodway treadmill. The absolute gold standard of all treadmills. This one goes to 15 miles per hour. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty hard, as you can see. I mean, these things are rate, rated for like 200,000 miles, something like that. Um, so with the injury that I've had, I've actually not used it a super a lot because um, I'm just trying to really lessen the taxation on my joints at the moment. But once I'm confident that this thing is, is behind us, uh, I'll get back onto this bad boy for all my super high-end stuff because as I said, it does go to 15 miles per hour. So, and the smoothest ride you'll ever have on a treadmill. It's absolutely beautiful with the slatted base. Uh, as you can see, I've got this, installed this beautiful motivational mural. Um, it is a picture of me, which is kind of odd to have a very large picture of yourself in your room, but it wasn't really my idea. It was actually this very strange videographer who comes around my house every now and then. It was his idea, but anyways, we didn't want to make him feel bad by not using one of his photos. So we uh, put up this beautiful motivational mural, which is coming down from the most iconic race the Ironman World Championship. This is this is coming down from Javi, the turnaround of that race. Um, and I absolutely love it. And you can see on this particular day, the crosswinds were already picking up, which soon enough, they will pick up again in Kona. And I can't wait. So next up on our on our agenda here is my, is my other beauty. This one, her and I have been through countless, countless trials and tribulations together. Um, I've rebuilt pretty much everything other than the frame. It's a new deck, new motor. This thing has been replaced probably three times. Um, all the belts have been replaced and still, still chugging along. I absolutely love it. The best entry, whatever mid-range treadmill you'll ever buy, highly recommend, love it. Uh, and so, so this one, it has what's called the runner's flex. You see, literally when I run on this thing, it probably flexes an inch or so, uh, which is fantastic for the joints, especially when you're a little bit, hi Bubba, when you're a little bit, um, you know, weary of the taxation of running as I have been due to the injury. Oh my, oh my, I forgot to mention one of the most important and integral pieces of this training room, and that is training on Zwift. And as you can see here in my run setup, I have, uh, this is actually patented. You'll have to, if you want to copy this, you'll have to obviously file uh, in written uh, for, for my permission. But I have here a beautiful iPad stand that I've created to hold the iPad nice. And then I will uh, play or watch, or whatever you want to say, on Zwift uh, during my running here. And then compliments of the beautiful Wahoo desk. I will also be on Zwift. Um, approximately the last few weeks, 12 to 17 hours a week between the bike and the run. So, um, yeah, I mean, there was life. I, that's really how I demarcate my I demarcate my life in two ways. One is there was my life before and after Zwift, and there was my life before and after meeting Aaron. Love you, honey. Um, so those are the two ways. I'm not putting one above the other. <laughs> so, come on over here to the cycle station, and I've got the beautiful canyon on the beautiful Wahoo kicker, and the beautiful uh, uh, desk here, which you can move in and out as you, because my time, I'll swap out my time trial bike, and I'll need to move this out because the, the arms are a bit longer. Um, absolutely fantastic perfect resistance with the app in the Wahoo uh, Kicker app. You can do erg mode, you can do percentage mode, you can do um, speed, you can do whatever you want. 
and control it however the workout is prescribed and oftentimes I'll flip flop back and forth between all those different things. If I'm doing super high end, I'll flip over to percent grade, which allows me to switch the gears and then I'll flip back to a very low wattage and erg mode. Um, just, just great for, for all my training needs. So you'll see I got the road bike set up right now. That's because today was uh, super high end quality and uh, tomorrow, well, tomorrow I have a day off, but my long ride will be on Saturday and I'll have the time trial bike back in there because we're getting close to the race. And so it's time to get sort of specific with the training. Uh, bring it into here, which used to be the heat room. I used to have the treadmill and everything in here, but then I kind of thought, um, you know, if I'm gonna do heat work, there's more than, I can make this room more than hot enough anyway. And all you need to do is shut the fan off and you'll see how ridiculously hot your core can get. So I ended up turning this into storage. I can see I got all the beautiful head rims hung up, can access all of my different training, the shorts, the shirt, shoot, the shirts, the shorts, the socks, blah, blah, blah. It's all nice and easy, accessible, the towels. Um, got a couple of little workout things. And then of course, when I do do some heat training for, let's say, an early season race, perhaps, you know, let's say Pukan or something where, where it's their summertime and obviously it's freezing cold here, I can always crank this bad boy up, which will get up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, so this, we've, had, we've spent a lot of great times in there too. I don't remember any of them because I was like three quarters brain dead, but um, I do think they were fun times. And then we got the beautiful sound system, beautiful golden ear, high definition speakers, the best sounding speakers you'll ever get. Love them, the most important part of a training room. And then of course, if you haven't already noticed, um, we've got literally the wall is completely full of mirrors, uh, as well as a mirror over here for profile view. And so, the logic here, this is a very new addition to the training room. The logic here is that probably my biggest area for improvement in running is my, my, my limp or my deterioration on the second half of the run. And so um, I would say I don't really need to improve speeds per se. It's more about improving sustainability of that speed because I've run a lot of great half marathons, but never a great full marathon, certainly not on the second half of the marathon. So um, so one of the things I'm doing to, to try and make that a reality is never running with poor form. So the mirrors in front and then the mirror on the profile view are all gonna help me do that and hold me accountable, as well as on the bike. I've also been a pretty inefficient, um, you know, snaking and, bobbing and all of this sort of thing rider and so as you can see i can see myself there as well and i mean a lot of these things i think you can at least make strides in the right direction uh through conscious awareness and through actually holding yourself accountable so <clears throat> first off i have to just have a little refuel here just get rid endurance in there um oh yes i should mention i could never ever construct something so beautiful in my whole life. Uh, so we gotta give big shout out to Jim, my, my father-in-law, and Aaron, and Talbot, and Jeremy, and a whole bunch of people who helped us out in constructing this, uh, this beautiful room. As you recall in some older videos, uh, it certainly did not look like this. So super happy with how it turned out. Now you can come back into an area that still is under renovation, but um, is, is, is a very new development in my, I guess, my career. There's the beautiful time trial bike there. Really excited to put that thing to use soon. Um, so as we have here, this is uh, something that I, that I slowly, as I integrate the strength training and the, uh, the efficiency training that's going on in there, this is kind of like the final piece of the puzzle, which is the big stretch cage, which for me, uh, both in the bike, the run and the swimming, uh, range of motion and mobility are still, you know, limiting factors. So, um, slowly but surely, I integrate this more and more into my routine as I, as we um, integrate more strength training and that sort of thing, and this becomes even more important. So, now you'll turn your attention to another area that is brand new, 
that is a byproduct of the injury that I got. And that here is the squat rack, the bench, some uh, dumbbells, the barbell, I don't know, 250 pounds worth of weight. Um, and this is all a byproduct of things I learned from Sam Rockwater, my physio in Tucson, who uh, helped me, you know, through the rehab of the of the, the fracture, and who certainly has bestowed um, a true interest and appreciation for the value of strength and strength training. And I've only been doing it for about eight weeks now, but without a doubt. I can feel it already in my bike and run, and I certainly am a believer. And I'm excited to continue to hone this this area and become uh, more proficient and efficient uh, in, in in utilizing it. So then, here's my other component of my swim training here, the Vasa trainer. Also, as I started to get an appreciation for the strength training, then I started to say, well, obviously. If you've seen benefits uh, from you know the squats and various other stability exercises, then you probably would also see some benefit from doing swim-specific strength training. And so that's where this uh, device kind of comes in. It's an it's the ERG model, so you can actually get a power reading for how much force you're applying, and it's not just like oh, I'll do it by feel. You can actually get some data, which I really love. And uh, I've only been using this for a few weeks now, kind of, you know, integrated into my training, but I'm really excited to see sort of uh, where, where we can take this and where we can go. Um, back over here, I have a non-stolen Windsor sign that I have yet to hang, but I just want to really iterate that that is a replica sign. That is not a stolen sign, okay? Paid good money for it at a fun um, art event called Art in the Park here in Windsor, Ontario. Great public event. Um, finally, of course, also almost equally as important as the training is the nutrition. And here we have our uh, nutrition, you know, uh, we've got Gatorade Endurance, we've got regular Gatorade if we're just doing some easy rides. And, uh, you know, hanging out around the house and just want to rehydrate. We've got some protein, we've got gels, we've got chews, got even some meal replacements. Um, and so this is also a really important, important area of the training room and of being able to sustain the training. And then of course, always got a stockpile of uh, new bike shoes in case we start to wear out some old ones. So, um, so that's the vast majority of the room. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't iterate enough. Watch out for that wall there. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't say enough how much I just truly love this training room and how uh, grateful I am to have such a great training space and how inspired I am when, when I'm in here. And, you know, a lot of people think indoor training is subpar or what do you torture yourself for with doing that and stuff and it's like no 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 you got it all wrong it's like not only is it not torture like i love it i, I crave it and i actually think with all of the things that i've mentioned um it's actual i think it's better than outdoor training because well i already mentioned all the reasons why in this video but um Anyways, I, I, I absolutely love it and I'm excited to, to keep going and I'm excited to get back to training and racing this year. So, uh, thanks for stopping along. Thanks for coming in. Maybe next time you can at least like send us a message before you come instead of showing up at my house unbeknownst. So, it's past my bedtime now, so I'm gonna have to ask you guys to uh, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. No more, no more, no more, no more.